Good morning everybody and welcome back. It's that time of year again. It's time to head to the tent for the winter trip. Well this year going up for the winter trip uh, my main concern is, and I'm not sure, I know they've got a lot of snow up there. I don't know how much it has settled, so walking across the lake, I don't know if it's going to be real hard or real easy. We just got done with a stretch of weather that was 35 to 40 degrees below zero actual temperature. Now today we're going to shoot up and I think it's going to be a high of like 17 degrees up there, which is going to be absolutely amazing. I didn't want to do the winter trip when it's going to be 30 below. It's just it's just too cold, uh, too much to try to heat up. It's just much easier when it's a little bit warmer. I'm pretty sure that uh, this year going up is almost exactly the same time that I went up last year. So we can do a little bit of a comparison and see what the winter looks like this year compared to last year. seeing a lot of vehicles pulling the snowmobile trailers and the snowmobiles. Minnesota has 22,000 miles of groomed snowmobile trails and this is going to be a perfect weekend for people to go riding. in and fill up with diesel. Okay, I'm all fueled up. I also buy one big bottle of water because when I get up to the tent there's going to be no water for a few hours until things thaw out. I just have to get a couple of things here, most everything I have with me. Okay everyone, well that's going to do it for civilization for a while. stretch before I get there is pretty icy so I'm just kind of taking it easy. I don't know from here that snow looks pretty deep. Maybe it'll be hard on top and a person will ride on top of it I don't know. Well, it's 16 degrees out, so the temperature isn't bad. There is a little bit of a breeze that'll kind of be a factor when I'm on the lake, but it's not a big deal at all. We come across the lake a lot worse than this. take off some of my heavier clothes. I'm way too overdressed for this. It's like a summer day once you start walking.
Well, I'm almost halfway across now. Snow isn't too bad at all, but it's still a hard walk. Snow will be like I'd already been there. <laughs> the fire would be going. I don't know if you can see it, but the folks' cabin is right there. I don't see any trees down on it. Looks like she's doing pretty good. That looks pretty good in here. Nothing has moved at all. Doesn't look like there's been any critters in here or nothing. I have the door open right now because it's uh, 14 degrees inside and 18 degrees outside. <laughs> Let some of that warm air in here. I started this little heater back here. I'll run one tank of uh, fuel through that. It all helps to warm it up in here. I turned down the little electric one back here in the bedroom. It doesn't do much, but it does help a little bit.
Well, the food up here, I did bring lots of stuff for lunch because it's the clock on the uh, weather station is wrong. The battery must have went dead in there. But, uh, I bought potatoes. A chuck roast. Pork steaks. I always get this thing of hamburgers just in case. You never know if you're going to get stranded up here or who knows. You know, it's always better to have a little bit more food than you need. I brought up some sticks of butter because I am out of canned butter. Two onions. This was kind of also extra. This was venison chops. And I've been waiting since deer hunting. I brought up the heart from the deer that I shot. I've been waiting for the winter trip. I asked Melissa if she wanted to have it with me and she said no. So I saved it for the winter trip and we're up here and I'll probably cook this up and maybe some, maybe some chops tonight for dinner, we'll see. And I had a bag of butter and uh, bacon was already in my freezer at home. It must have been from probably last time I was up here deer hunting. So I brought it back up too. So got everything we need. Let's see if the frozen TV and DVD player will come on. That's about 240 right now. It's just starting to feel nice in here. It's still a little chilly at the uh, foot level. It's 74.1 at head level in here. The vegetable oil is all still frozen, but it isn't that white color it was when I came in here, so it must be getting softer. You can see that the soap is starting to thaw it a little bit. The ice is starting to melt off the mirror back here in the bedroom. <laughs> it was completely ice covered. I put the heated blanket here on 8. I imagine that'll help warm it up in here some too. It's actually snowing pretty good out here right now.
Well, it's finally warm enough so I can take my warm clothes off, but I think before I do that, I want to go grab a couple of the uh, trail cameras out there, and uh, to get to the one out there, I'm going to want to shovel out as far as the fire pit anyway, so I'm going to shovel that out first, and then I'll get into that knee-deep snow and get those, and then we can take a look. I don't know. It's been over two months since I've been up here. Temperatures have been really cold, so I don't know how long those batteries lasted, but uh, see if we got anything anyway. Well, not a whole lot's happened since I left. <laughs> uh, the date's not right on this one, but uh, I mean, we had that. We had some more snow that fell from a tree, and here I am coming today. So for, what is it, 10 weeks? Um, not very much happening out front by the dock. With this one that was in front of the tent, it kind of, I don't know why it put the files in differently, but like here, that's where I put the camera back. Zach and I are leaving. Then we had a snowstorm. Then it must have just got completely covered in snow. And then it must not have did anything. This was on 1229. So the end of the year, and then you can see a little bit there, and that's the last picture. And then the next time it picks up is a month later, so I have no idea. Well, I did not bring up any vegetables. I actually forgot to pick up. I was gonna get a couple of little, uh, the little jars of them, but I, I, I really, the more years I come up here, it's been a lot of years now, I try to keep that sled as light as possible because you just never know how hard that pull is gonna be. But luckily, I have dehydrated vegetables up here that don't get used enough. So I think we'll do some of those and I'll just get them started to hydrate right now anyway. I got some green beans and I'll put some peas in there. These were done on February 4th, 2012. Day I was up here was November 18th and today is February 2nd.
when I write in the tent journal, uh, you know, basically what you're getting is the video written down. But I, I put a lot more personal stuff in here. If there's something that's happening in my life or going to be happening, I will write about it in here. You know, because these go back all the way to 2007, I believe. Yeah, 2007 for sure. I don't think it was any earlier than that. So, I mean, I've got stuff written in there about going through a divorce and meeting Melissa and, and just going through everything. And when I was up here deer hunting, um, and I've dropped some hints on this. My dad went through a major ordeal here. And uh, there have been little things, especially if you watch my other YouTube channel, um, that one there, Joe and Zach Survival is more, we have the tent, we have deer hunting, and on the other channel it's more, more vlogish. you know, it's like you get the whole weekend. So there are times when I just have to, I would say something that would, would give a little hint like I've got to leave, I've got to go back because I've got to do some stuff with my dad. So anyway, he, uh, he was in for pretty much a routine, he went in for an MRI and they found an aneurysm in, in his brain and of course with an aneurysm if it burst you're gonna have a stroke and where this one was located he pretty much would have just died and he knew about this during deer hunting I have a 30 minute long video clip of him sitting in the couch right there explaining the whole procedure what they're gonna do everything so we knew about this before deer hunting but he wanted to make sure that he got through deer hunting because, you know, that's like the favorite thing of the year. And then also when you come back up here opening fishing, he wanted to have it finished back to normal so he could make it back up here for opening fishing because he doesn't come up here for the winter trip now. So anyway, um, this operation was supposed to take between three and a half, maybe two and a half to three and a half hours, okay? Um, no more than four hours and the operation ended up taking nine hours so this was a really big deal he was only supposed to be in the hospital for two days like go home on the third day and he was in the hospital for six full days and then after that we brought him to a transitions place where he was there I don't know a couple weeks he went in for the operation on December 14th he did not get back home until January 1st. So that's how long he was away from the house. And then it took until January 15th, I believe that's the date that we brought him back down for his one month checkup and they gave him the okay that he can drive a vehicle again short distances. So he can go like from my mom and dad's house to my house and work in the workshop and which he did a couple days later but he can only go there for like a couple hours because he still gets so tired a brain injury takes so much out of you and it takes so long for it to heal that it might take six months before he starts to feel back to you know like sleeping wise back to normal so anyway i was i wanted to do a video about this i talked to my mom, my mom, my mom and dad about this and uh, you know before you guys are seeing this they will see all of this and I just have a hard time getting through it because this was a very emotional thing. I mean, you really got to see it. I mean, I have, I have two, two brothers and a sister, and um, this was like the first time that the, you know, the whole family, you know, had a major thing going on. So you really got to see how people acted and reacted and, and you kind of in check with yourself about where your emotions are. So I've never been able to go think I could get through a video showing these pictures and make it through, but uh, I think I can do it today. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to warn you, this picture right here is going to be very graphic. You're going to see that this was not just uh, go to the doctor and, and you know, put a band-aid on it. But I'll warn you before we get to that one. So this picture right here was taken on December 14th. Uh, this I had to have him at the hospital by 5.30 in the morning and so he could get prepped and that was the day that the operation was going to happen. And it's weird through this whole entire thing, you really get to, I mean, you know, you've got your mom and your dad, if you're lucky like I am, I still have both my parents. And, and you know, they joke around, I mean, my dad is 75, he's going to be 76 years old. Uh, you know, so my mom jokes, my dad jokes and everything, but, and you know that they love each other, but you don't 
you know, we really got to see it during this whole thing here. Uh, they were sitting like this, and I'm sitting over where I am right now, and, you know, they didn't know I could hear. My dad says, you know, Mom, it's getting pretty spooky now. And that was right before they were going to bring him in. And then they come and got him, and he walked down with the nurse back to the prep room. And um, they had everything written on, aneurysm, left side, which actually ended up being more down in the middle. That's why it took so much longer. They had to actually separate parts of his brain to get down in there to clip it. And it just took, you know, more than twice as long as they thought. Here he was when they, uh, he's all ready to go into anesthesia or whatever. This is the last time we got to see him before the operation. They had the lady come in to say prayers and all these people. And my dad's just like, let's just get this over with. And my brother Chris, my sister-in-law Teresa, my mom, we were in that waiting room forever. My brother Johnny. Uh, he came, I, I got a picture of him, he came and he was there. My sister, she lives in Florida, so we were constantly in contact with her and she was going to fly back if anything horrible happened. Uh, luckily it didn't. I think he was in that hospital for six days, so for six days I ate hospital food. Now my brother John, he came. This now, he got out of the operation on the night of the 14th late and we came then in the morning it was it was actually scary to walk in and see him uh he i mean he even looks better here than he did that first night but this is the next morning my brother chris talking to him and because of where the operation was in his brain it affected his speech so there's two different kinds like for him he could understand what we were saying but he could not talk he would try to and he'd just shake his head. And here he's just like completely out of it. So, but he was actually fairly good this day on Saturday. Sunday was the day that we really, I mean, nobody talked about it straight out. We do now. We really were not sure that he would ever come home from the hospital. It was a very, very scary day. And that was down in three. Then they brought him up to four, four A. And this was him during this time in his six days and he would just sit there and when you would talk to him you know he would shake his head but it just he wasn't there and uh, he doesn't remember he can remember a little bit either me or Chris talking to him or my mom in the very beginning he remembers nothing of being in the hospital after that because then see what happened was he had the operation and then the brain swelled and that swelled on all those parts and it just pretty much wiped him out and here he was again, he'd come in there and he would be awake for a little bit and then he would just be sleeping. And I don't know, I think this next picture you guys is the graphic one. You're going to see what the stitches look like. So anyway, if you want to skip this one, go ahead. Otherwise, um, here it is. You can see they had to cut him from there all the way down to his ear. And um, so it was no simple thing. They cut him, they then cut a piece out of his skull to get in there, and then they put that piece back in with little metal plates and screws, and then sewed him back up. After that, they moved him up to level six, and there they had to get him up and walking. They'd have to have somebody help him. And I mean, he was still out of it, still couldn't talk, and I don't know, it was just a real tough time for all of us. And this is the day he was so happy to get out of there. I mean, he couldn't talk very well, and but he could understand us just fine. He said that his mind was working, but there was just nothing that he could do about it. And uh, he really wanted to get out of there bad, even though he doesn't even remember this. And he's actually putting his own shoes on right there. They're kind of helping him, tell him you can't put his head too far down because they had to keep the pressure off of the brain. And there he was trying to wash off some of the blood, the doctor and the nurse. There's my mom. And then they're wheeling him out. And uh, I then drove him to here. This is my, me and my mom, or my mom and me. <laughs> drove him here. This was transitions. This was closer to home. The other place was about a 45 or 50 minute drive. This was right. It's just you know, in Elk River. So I mean, they live in Elk River. So it was super close. And basically he would sleep and he was here for 
well, if you read in the journal, I don't know the exact amount of days, but almost, almost two weeks. And he wanted to get out of there so bad. And then on January 1st, I drove them home, and this was the first time he had been out. He was so happy, and there was a picture of him. And then we went back one month later, one month from, it was January 15th versus December 14th when he went in, and we had to go back for his checkup. And he did really good. After he got back from transitions, then they had home care. A nurse would come out three times a week, and they would do physical therapy, and they had a speech person coming out for a while, but his speech got better and better and better. As soon as that swelling went down, he could finally talk. They said that if you have that operation on the other side of your brain, or, or it affects the other side, you can under... He, he would not have been able to understand us, but he would have been able to talk. And so a lot of those people, they say, talk and talk and talk and talk. And um, yeah, so it's just weird how the brain works. So here we went in and he had his consultation. We got to see the, the surgeon and uh, he did reiterate that this was way more difficult than what he thought it was gonna be looking, you know, they didn't know looking at the CAT scans and the MRIs. And uh, uh, that actually my dad is doing way better than he even thought that he would. So, and then here was actually, here was a picture right after the operation, which was over in this area. And this is all swelling and the blood on the brain. And this right here is the little clip. There was a little bulge that came out of the artery. It almost looked like a little appendix. And they had to get in there and snip that, but it was so deep in there, more in the middle part, that he had such a hard time. So that's the metal clip. But then you can see here, a month later, where you can still see the clip, but that swelling, which there's still some there, but most of it is gone now. And that'll still take weeks for that to go, even months, to completely go down because the brain heals so slow. When we were at that doctor's appointment, they gave him the okay to drive again. And uh, I actually had his truck at my house because, well, first of all, my mom has a hard time getting in and out of the garage if his truck is in there. And we really didn't want him to drive because he really wanted to drive. <laughs> so anyway, that uh, the next day, I brought him home that day. And then the following day, I went and picked him up at his house, brought him over here. And for the first time in like it was like 35 days, he got to go back into the workshop. So that was a pretty happy day for, for everybody. And a couple days after that, he came out to the workshop and this table right here that he had it all drawn out, I've shown it in a different video, but uh, he started to build this. So he goes out there, spends a couple hours, then he has to go back because he gets tired. He hits that wall tired wall and they still have him on a couple of medications until March 14th uh, and both of those make you tired and your brain trying to heal makes you very tired so anyway he's not 100% normal yet but uh, he wanted to be okay by opening fishing and I think he's going to be doing really well okay I'm glad I got that part down I didn't know how that was going to go I could never get past that part where he's told my mom this is getting spooky, Ma. That part breaks me up every time when I think about it. It really does. And there was so many times, like, when my dad couldn't talk, and um, and he would reach out and hold my mom's hand and stuff. And you just knew that he was in there, and he just couldn't get out. So, anyway, it was traumatic, but a happy ending. Well, I think it's time to get some supper ready. Dear heart vegetables here they're pretty hydrated now I think I will I think I'm gonna fry up some potatoes with that all I wanted to carry was a three pound bag I didn't want a five pound bag and the only one they had were three pounds were these little potatoes but can't you know I couldn't take a couple pounds out and leave it in the truck because all that's gonna do is freeze so this will be just fine I was having a 911 moment there. I always just put my fillet knife right up here, and it's like, oh no, my fillet knife's gone. And uh, Zach was up here with me last time for deer hunting, and he did dishes, so it went where it was supposed to go.
this thing so it wouldn't get freezer burned. <laughs> Everything is heating up in here now. It's getting really hot. Now I was going to cook up these some chops too, but they are still too frozen. I'll just, if I have to cook them tomorrow for lunch, I will. Well, we'll just let them sit there and cook. The trick to great smothered or fried potatoes is low heat and cook them slow until they are nice and tender, then crank up the heat and fry them on the outside. Most of them are there, getting pretty soft. A couple of them still have a little pile to go in here. Okay, everyone, well, it's time for dinner.
Okay, everyone. Well, it's 1121 at night, and I am going to bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It looks like the uh, solar batteries out there in the outside part of the weather station must not work that good. Because, I mean, it's dark outside right now, and I'm not getting any readings from outside. But uh, it, I was just out there, and it's, it's not bad. So I think it's warmed up overnight some. Maybe it's the fact that there is zero wind. I don't know. It just does feel warmer out here. I guess we will find out when the sun comes up, which will be, I don't know, another hour and a half or so. It's cloudy out there, but it's starting to get light out. Well, looking at the weather for today, my weather radio, I can't get it to come on, and I forgot. I think it did that that last weekend of deer hunting, but so I'm looking here, and it looks like we're going to get some snow tonight, and this now is from Monday, and I'll, I'm going to actually be going home tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. Uh, looks like we're going to get another three to five inches. Well, I think we're going to go out there and shovel a little path around the fire pit. I'd like to do some uh, pork steaks for lunch today so I don't have to cook out in the dark. And um, I need to shovel that out first. Now we can get a reading for what it is outside, and it's, it feels nice out there. So, But I think right now, I think I'll do the cooking this afternoon for tonight. Uh, I have enough leftovers for lunch. Let's go ahead and snowshoe down the driveway, see if there's any trees down. Walk over to the folks' cabin, make sure everything is doing okay, because nobody has been there since uh, the end of deer hunting either. Definitely could have used the bigger snowshoes, but they're such a pain, those big ones, when you're going across the lake. It's nice having the smaller ones. Yeah, 
can see we have some rabbit tracks here. I'm not sure what this is, probably a wolf, because they are really going to sink in and their bellies are going to drag. We have some mouse tracks here. Definitely a deer trail right there. Looks like there was maybe one skier that came through this morning. Well, let's head over to the folks' place. It is very cold in here. He has all the power shut down and I don't want to go out to the electric box and pop it all back on. Well, everything looked good in there. Just making sure there's no windows broken in the shop. Well, let's head back to the tent. It's probably pretty close to lunchtime now.
fella at the window. Who is the nice man? Oh, shut up. Start looking for his cash. All he got on him. Well, it's just about 4 o'clock in the afternoon now. I watched a couple of gun smokes. There's just not a whole lot to do up here in the wintertime when the snow is this deep. I think I'm going to go out there and start that fire in the fire pit and get that burning. I don't want to have to do everything in the dark. Well, I think I'm going to do some potatoes just in a foil pack tonight. Uh, tomorrow I'm definitely going to have to head out of here. I uh, just watched a weather report online for up here and we are in the 5 to 9 inches of snow category, which I 5 to 9 inches of snow is not a big deal. I can get out of here no problem, drive around in that no problem. The thing is that today was quite nice. It, I think the warmest I saw it was... Uh, 18 something degrees. I don't think it made it to 19. But now tonight it's going to start snowing and then the temperatures are going to drop down. I think the high tomorrow is going to be 7 degrees and then it's going to drop and tomorrow night then it's going to be 18 to 20 degrees below zero. And then after for the all of next week it's going to be super cold and the problem I have with that, like I said, I don't the snow I could care less about but the cold and my diesel not being plugged in, that could be a problem. I do think it was pretty cold last year when we left here and I was worried about that. And I do have a generator in the back of the truck in case I have to uh, plug it in, but I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna take that chance. I'd rather just get out of here and be safe. And really by, I've done just about everything you can do up here for the winter trip unless I went walking around on the lake and stuff. That's a nice looking pork steak there. Might as well cook all these up. Haul them out with me.
I think for a vegetable tonight. Let's see, what is this? This is veg all that I made. long enough let's go out and put these on the fire Well, the steaks are done. I think they look pretty good. Enough water had thawed out in that five gallon thing so I can get enough for a shower tonight, so that's nice. I dehydrated this uh, veg all so many years ago, I can't even remember what's in it. I see some carrots, this must be potatoes. See some corn. Not really sure what all is in there.
smells good. Okay, everyone, it's dinner time. For you guys that are new here, the shower always gets comments. Pretty simple setup. Right there is just a RV camper pump, a 2.8 gallon per minute. My hose comes down right there. It will go into that uh, container of water that I'm heating up on the stove. Under the kitchen sink here, which is the wall behind it is the shower wall. I have a marine battery down here. And I just have my positive and my negative. I just hooked those up right now. I unhook them before I leave, otherwise you end up getting, um, I don't know, it gets kind of corroded around there. Twice a year I have to charge it up with my battery charger. If I were to put in just a small solar panel, it could trickle charge that and I'd never have to charge it. The reason I had that shower head on the ground is when it's cold like this, you've got to let it drain out. And otherwise it'll freeze up and it takes forever before you can get it going and I'm always worried that it'll freeze and ruin that pump. I've used the hot water on demand systems before. I've had two of them and one of them was uh, even a more expensive unit and I still only get about a year out of them, a little bit more, and then I start to have trouble with them. Once I put in that pump it may be a little bit more work for me to have to heat up the water, but um, it's been flawless and I have no trouble with it. So like I said, I put my water up here. I put the hose in there. I do have a switch right here as well as an on and off right here. So I'm going to go take a shower and I'll be back in a minute. Oh, I got to grab a towel. I couldn't get this radio to work since the like last weekend of deer hunting and I was just playing around with it now and there's a switch on the side here because I couldn't figure it out. I would push this, the light would come on. It was just like the, the volume wasn't up and something was shut off, but now it works. A chance of light snow in the evening, then light snow likely after midnight. Well, I don't have a whole lot of dishes to do, but I think I'm gonna do them right now. I'm not, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm not in any hurry in the morning, but. Uh, usually if I'm going to do something, might as well get it taken care of, so I probably will leave fairly early, just not right at daybreak.
well, now that I started, I figure I might as well just finish it up and be done. <laughs> Maybe I will end up leaving earlier in the morning than I thought. Okay everyone, well it's 10.36 at night, everything is pretty much cleaned up in here. I'll have to wash the table in the morning, make the bed, otherwise I'm pretty much ready to go. I will see you guys in the morning. It's about a quarter after 6 right now, I've been up since about 10 after 5. It's lightly snowing out, but there hasn't been too much. Every so often the wind will pick up a little bit, so... I just want to make sure I get out of here before it gets windy and super cold when I'm crossing the lake. Well, it's just about time to head across the lake. It's uh, 8 degrees out there right now, my, according to my phone. It doesn't say on my weather station yet. 
and it's snowing all pretty good, but at least it's not super windy. Well, I'm a little over halfway there. That wind is cold on the lake today. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching and taking along with me on another winter trip to the tent. on the next video.